I'm Yegor and I've been living in China for more than 13 years. Everywhere you can find representatives of intangible cultural heritage. This is exactly the China I'm talking about. Hello, I'm Yegor. I'm a big music fan. Recently, I've come across the Kuchin, an instrument with a history going back 3,000 years. In 2003, the Kuchin and its music were proclaimed as part of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. But how do its slow, gentle melodies resonate in fast-paced modern China? I'll be putting this and other questions to several experts in an attempt to discover what is the Kuchin's place in China today. Shanghai is not a place I would normally associate with ancient music. Yet, in conjurous though it may seem, in this modern metropolis, there is a group of young people who love nothing more than to play traditional instruments, and they're creating quite a stir across the country. You know, this atmosphere is actually very exciting. It's in the middle of creating something beautiful. It's not there yet, but everybody's getting ready, and everybody is, you know, trying to find the best zhuang tai. Originally, Kuchin playing developed as an elite art form, practiced by nobles and scholars in private settings, so the music was never intended for public performance. I want to tell you a little bit about, about this instrument. What's, what's really cool about Kuchin is that even though it's a very quiet instrument, they found a really unique way to putting it in the band. So, 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 their combination of traditional instruments with a Western style caused a sensation. Many people like me had never heard anything like it before. I was lucky enough to be invited to one of their team building events, and this is what I found. These traditional characters all became fighters. It's the contrasts within the team that really surprised me. Slow and fast, old and new. It's young people, you know. Go, go, go! So how did they come up with the idea of using the traditional guqin in such a non-traditional way? Yue 
，它就是有一种工业时代和电子信息时代的独特的因素。I wouldn't say they exactly became bored with playing traditional Kuchin music. What they wanted to do was explore more possibilities for marrying this ancient instrument with a modern style. I I came to you here and found many toys. There are many different kinds of strange and weird instruments. I really don't care if it's from Chinese music. I use it because it's the first thing is that it's the same. 视觉上要跟我们是统一的啊，要好看。是的，比如说像乌笛鼓啊，或者是尼泊尔的这个颂钵啊，或者是萨满鼓啊，嗯、或者是东中东的这个达布卡和达夫啊，它虽然它是西方的，或者说是呃中东的，不是中国的，不是中国的，但是它的声音和外形都是合适的，那么我们也会用。就像外国人在中国也是，<笑>对,对,对,对，虽然我们不是中国的，可以一起玩。你做节奏，我做旋律吧。啊，可以的。所以你们这边就是不同的人，然后一起来玩，玩到一块你就录音是吧？我比较喜欢的方式就是把传统的古琴曲把它重新解构和改编，变成一首合奏的曲子。我相信，如果古代有电。古琴的声音可以放大的话，古人一定会用古琴合奏的。我们把古琴参与到合奏里了，它有的时候可以做旋律，有的时候可以做和声，嗯、有的时候可以做 b a s 斯，呃， yeah, 因为它有低音嘛。是的，有的时候还可以 solo。好、啊，先调一下弦，不太准。四个弦都播一遍，听听。I remember seeing these videos for the first time and realizing that somehow this music and these instruments really complement each other. And clearly, I'm not alone thinking this. Many young people have posted comments like, "I totally want to learn the kuchin," and this traditional instrument is actually so cool. It's fascinating to see those young people exploring the possibilities of the kuchin while celebrating its musical values. I, for one, have been inspired to discover more about the history of this ancient instrument. Guo Peng's day job, though very much connected to music, has little to do with traditional Chinese instruments. 这里是中央广播电视总台国广进取调频 Hit FM。大家好，我是郭鹏。Is the host of a radio show, playing contemporary Western music, but a traditionalist at heart, he spent 11 years exploring the Kuchin's history and published the fullest audio and video collection of Kuchin music ever compiled. Guo Peng, you see, you've been doing this for so many years, the host of the Western music program. But I found that when I came to your house, I found that you 
你很多都是中国传统文化的东西啊。那我从二零零六年开始、嗯，当时做了一个大的收集，大概有将近一百多盘的 CD。Guo Peng has told me a little about the Guqin. It has been in existence for over 3,000 years. It's a product of China's agricultural civilization, with the strings traditionally made of silk. The Guqin has seven strings and 13 marked pitch positions. It was one of the four arts, along with calligraphy, painting, and an ancient form of chess that Chinese scholars were expected to master. According to tradition, 20 years of training were required to attain proficiency. Most compositions for the Guqin describe nature and its beauty. For instance, there is the famous piece "Running Water." The melody transports you to the banks of a river or the edge of a waterfall. Guo Peng explains that a sign of a poor Guqin player is one who looks at the right hand while playing. Guqin is the oldest instrument in China. It has over 2,000 years of history. The sound we now hear is Guan Pingfu playing the Guqin Music of the Liu Shui. 百代公司，特请魏仲洛先生古琴独奏《醉鱼》唱完。哎、我收集的最早的影像资料，距今有。Among Guo Peng's collection of audio and video recordings by old Guqin masters, the earliest is dated April 25, 1913. Making it an incredible 108 years old. Mr. Liang will play the nocturne. No doubt, Guo Peng should be immensely proud of this huge achievement. And I hope that the years of work have enriched his life, and indeed will enrich the world of music. This is what I've done for this ten years of work. There are about 200 people in different places who have helped me. So I want to say that I'm doing this thing not alone. I'm doing it with a team of people. One team of people completes one team's task. 那我们这一代呢，就是是一个承上，因为在下面老一辈的人，他们都接不到了。对，我们能够留下来一些东西，给以后的人The machine has a very complex build. Choice of materials is very essential, and it takes more than 100 different techniques to build one instrument. I am visiting one of the most renowned Guqin maestros in China, a national-level inheritor of the art, Ding Chengyun. 
Ying Chengyun probably did more than anyone else to ensure that the Kuchin and its music were included among the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. Shang 感觉到了, this is Mr. Ding's daughter, Ni Shang. As a little girl, she attended an old style private school for three years, where she studied the Confucian classics. But her father, Ding Chengyun, has his own opinion on this. Mr. Ding began learning to play the Kuching in the 1950s, mentored by the teachers who had been born during the Qing dynasty, receiving the pure tradition of Kuching art. Even though some disagreements over Kuching art appear from time to time, Father and daughter see it as their shared responsibility to pass down the culture of this instrument and its music to the next generation. I finally realized the essence of the inheritor's mission. It was not to limit people to a certain tradition, but to make sure that the most valuable and useful knowledge, also its ancient spirit, makes through the centuries.
This is exactly the China I'm talking about. As is the case with most other musical instruments, you don't need to be in a classroom to learn to play the kuchin. Online interactive kuchin lessons are proving an accessible and popular way to bring the classroom to anyone who wants to master the instrument. Wuna is recognized as one of the most unconventional players of this ancient instrument. Early on, she discovered that her interest in its music was piqued by cooperating with musicians from various other backgrounds to produce experimental works. In late 2016, she launched an online kuchin learning project called Man Xue Tang. Hello,你好 the gentle, serene Wuna of today is quite unlike the extrovert, unconventional young woman she once was. Her transformation as a musician can be traced back to 1992, when as a student at the Central Conservatory of Music, she came across an experimental album recorded by Chinese Guqin master Chen Kongliang and an electronic musician from the Netherlands. It completely changed her life. 词代的名字特别有趣叫中国梦副标题叫太湖与风车的对话那是真的改变我很大的一个观点的一张专辑然后古琴也可以即兴的演奏这么好听因为我对这样的音乐感兴趣之后其实就像种了一颗种子就是我
不是古琴了。嗯，我其实是希望他们先能够接受，所以在听上，嗯、他们能够接受它，并且喜欢它。In designing her online classes, Wuna concentrates her 20 years experience of mastering and experimenting with the Guqin. But she doesn't start by teaching experimental music. On the contrary, her courses feature a return to tradition. She accepts that non-traditional Kuchin music may not be to everyone's liking. They first have to get the foundations right. For example, for 10 years, they have to get the foundations right. After playing the songs, I always say, maybe for 10 years, 没准你们可以试着去做你们自己的即兴，跨界合作。When the Kuchin was being put forward for inclusion as a part of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2003, the number of skilled Kuchin players was only 53. But thanks largely to the dedication and innovative work of the wonderful people we've met today, that number has skyrocketed. Making the Kuchin's future brighter than it has been for a very long time.